Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a timeless pickle card reading. That's right, today on the table we have a variety of pickles to choose from. I will talk you through those in a moment. But the reason I'm finally doing an actual pickle card reading is because the Star Kindler on YouTube has sometimes commented on these videos and said hey it's a pickle card reading and it always makes me laugh and I love it so much and when the star kindler was writing those I was like oh I have to do an actual episode with real live pickles okay they're not alive don't worry I know we've had this controversy on the channel before about living objects can't use flowers all that kind of thing don't worry these are not alive I promise they come from a jar <laughs> and they're perfectly fine so we've got well firstly in the jar we have random quotes so it's a very random reading today and we have pickles so I've got well I've got Group number one has this beautiful little olive here. Don't know if you can see that, but it's just a classic olive in there. Comes out of a jar. No olives were harmed in the make. Well, I suppose it was growing at one time. Anyway, <laughs> so we've got olives, group one. Group two, we've got this little pickled onion here. Very sweet. And group three, we have, now on the jar it said cornetian, cornetian. But I tend to think of this as a gherkin or even like a little pickled cucumber. I have no idea, but that's one of those. And I love all these things. And in Sydney, it is starting to get a little bit cooler in weather. So we are doing roasts and, you know, pickles and all that. Yeah, we're, we're enjoying all these things at the moment. So feel free to choose from group one, group two or group three, and I'll see you in your reading. Hi there, group number one. If you chose group number one or this little olive here, this cute little olive, or if you chose via this deck, you're in the right place. Now, I have no idea what we're doing, but I do know that I said to myself, draw only two of these because I've got another tarot deck to draw from. I've got the Saturn deck and I've got quite a few other cards as well to choose from so let's just see what happens let's just see what energy do we have going on at the moment i hope you're doing well wherever you are hope your week is oh by the way this one is these should all be upright and these will be mixed this will be half half hope your week is going well wherever you are i've just been so busy doing doing readings, doing work. Thank you to everyone who has been booking. You're keeping me nice and busy, which I love, which is always good. Let's see, we'll take, okay, that one really wants to be here. I was thinking we could even be greedy and take two of these. Let's do it. Oh, well, Mars wants to be here. So I feel like that one does too, but we'll be disciplined too. <laughs> All right, so Mars, I mean, look at that. Mars in the first house. And we've got the power tools going in someone else's back garden. So this is interesting. Physically strong and driven, impulsive and enthusiastic, can do attitude. Body might be inflamed, cuts, injuries, scratches are possible, competitive, courageous, impatient. Of course, I mean, a lot of these things are dependent on what else you have going on in a chart, of course. But interesting that we've got this influx of masculine energy right at the beginning okay let's see what is in this beautiful denise lynn deck the sacred let's see it's called the sacred destiny oracle i really love this deck it's so nice okay, we'll take one of those and then we'll take so i've got this deck here and i've got also got the healing angels uh healing with the Healing, healing with the angels oracle cards yes i do like that deck it's just simple and really sweet and it's the first card that was ever drawn for me uh, when someone drew cards for me one time and yeah and i was so disappointed with the card i got <laughs> I, was, I think i've told this story before i got the study card 
And now I love getting that card. It's like if, if I ever get that card, I'm the happiest person. Okay, got some big Mars energy on the table. Where are we gonna go? I think we'll go here. Let's go this way. There's a lot of uh, a lot of kind of construction work happening around. So if you hear any of that, apologies from me. All right, Jupiter in the ninth. One excels as a lawyer, philosopher, lecturer, acquires property, fond of siblings, strong physique, wealthy, travels. If afflicted, could scam others. Okay, there we go. Uh, yes, it's possible, but it's so what Mars in the first. We've got Jupiter in the ninth. This is really interesting because each of these are in their own houses. And it feels like there's just, it feels like there's good physical energy here on the table. If you're feeling really tired and drained, know that this cycle is going to be coming in for you. So hang in there. Flow. Wow, this is stunning. I haven't seen this card. Gosh, and that looks like a full moon. Wow. Okay. Let's see what else we've got. Oh, how beautiful. We've got the Ten of Cups wonderful energy it says here the la delma and uh, okay this place <laughs> museum of the history of polish jews wow beautiful this is um, an architectural deck so they're really featuring the most beautiful architecture from around the world so this place obviously must be stunning place to visit ten of cups ten of cups of course is wish fulfillment it's being in love it's being happy it's it's those beautiful wonderful times in our lives that we often reflect on so this this type of energy if you're not experiencing it now this is what's wanting to come in intention exactly through your intention through your positive intention through your i've got the word willingness comes in will comes in because of mars and there's flow it's like i'm getting willingness to flow so it's there's two contradictory energies there in a, in a sort of way because will can be in a mars kind of way it's like i'm going to make it happen i'm not waiting for anything you know who cares about flow i'm going for it right so there's that energy here but then look at that jupiter jupiter has the wisdom to flow to to you know be a bit more wise about things interesting all right let's see what tarot has to say so far so good and i'm loving Loving the colors that we've got going on here as well. Olives, Europe. I always think of Italy and Europe with olives. So we've got, you know, Poland here. Hmm. All right, let's keep going. Ooh, the devil. All right. Yes, the devil crosses our path now and then. And it's amazing because I was working with one of you this week and on email you actually taught me a thing about how to deal with the devil and you just smile and you know when the devil crosses your path you kind of just smile and and accept the devil as he or she is right it was a lovely technique yeah i'm just trying to remember i must reread that email but i'm pretty sure the technique was just when the devil crosses your path, you smile. You, you, it, it's about being fearless. It's about not also not getting sucked in to, uh, you know, there are always things coming on our path trying to distract us. And you can certainly flow around these things, you know, as well. The nine of coins, beautiful really great energy here group one i'm super impressed let's get that in focus nine of coins nine of pentacles this is the independent enjoyment of wealth this is you know you're really content and that doesn't necessarily mean you have 
millions in the bank account or something like that. So many people have that and they're empty and they're miserable inside. This Nine of Pentacles is showing that you are completely satisfied and happy with what you have. And when you're grateful for what you have, it expands and it grows. And of course, we've got Jupiter here in the ninth, all about growing your fortune, about expanding that which is wonderful in your life already. So I think one of the things about this reading is it's very much asking you to focus on what is going really well in your life at the moment. So even if you may feel that things aren't going so well or you know that there's very little to be grateful for, the more you look for what there is to be grateful for, the more of it you will find. And that's where you have to put your focus and intention on those things that are working really well, on those things that you want to grow. And beware of the devils in your life, okay? And that can be people, but it can be things that are wanting to distract you. It can be, can even be foods. Um, we do have a little bit of a food theme going on here today. Yeah, it can, the, the th and it can be our own thoughts and emotions. The devil can be our own thoughts and emotions as well that can be really in our way. Hold on a moment, there we go. Ah, another hidden card. This happens sometimes. There we go. All right, so we've got the Six of Pentacles in reverse. Yeah, I, I think this is a card that is speaking about something that's happening in your world right now. You might feel that there is something out of balance in your life, something that's not fair. When this is upright, this is about fair exchange. There can be a correcting of an imbalance. We've got the scales here, the scales of justice. So when this is in reverse, it is pretty clear that there's something in your world right now that is perhaps out of balance. It could be to do with another person. Another person might be mirroring that back to you. See, and it's interesting, I don't know if you can hear the power tools cranking up again and that's giving me these mars vibes there might you might have been going through some anger as well that is quite possible and i was reflecting on anger today and i was thinking about how nowadays when i get angry it's become i'm getting faster at recognizing that it's me that it's i'm i'm not angry I'm actually dysregulated. That's one way that I'm looking at it. So because I'm doing that uh, course of Anna Runkles, which is all about dysregulation. And now I'm kind of, I'm really owning it. If I'm ever, I'm angry, I'm owning that, okay, yes, what they did wasn't fair, right? And that's this, it wasn't fair, it wasn't right. But I'm looking that, well, my energy is the one that's out of whack. And I'm actually doing that. I'm really more and more just owning my stuff and recognizing that it's me. And it's n that other person was just a trigger. And see, when you look at anger, anger is so interesting. And it's coming up here because we do have Mars in the first. This, this can be, you know, uh, the, the anger can be here. Really interesting that it's coming up. Because I was thinking about this the other day that the person that let's say I was angry at someone last week, the person was the same the day before the anger and the person was the same two days after I'd calmed down or a day after I'd calmed down or whatever it is. They actually didn't change. It was the change was actually happening in me. So this is really interesting about owning our stuff. And that it's, some, it's something I need to change within me in order to resolve the whole situation, really. It is, it is me. It's, that's hard work. This is the spiritual path. It's hard work to do. It's not easy. I know that. Let's get a clarifier on that one card because I just want to see... Yeah, I kind of want to see what is this about because... 
everything is so good here. It's really, really lovely. And then we'll draw a couple of quotes. So let's just take, let's take one for a start and let's just see, I wanna ask, has there been some anger? What has this been about? And how do we come back to ourselves? All right, there's two, I'll take these two. Yeah, Ten of Wands and Page of Wands. So what I'm seeing here is that this is amazing because I listened to a talk by Ram Das and it was funny because he talked exactly about anger and he said that know that, especially when you're on a spiritual path, anger is typically something that's being burnt up and you've probably been dealing with this situation again and again and again and again and possibly over this lifetime possibly over many lifetimes but when you're on the spiritual path and you really start to own it and look at okay that's actually me and you know I don't need for the other person to change I'd rather change me etc etc when we're doing that path what you're going to discover is that the anger is just an energy that's running off you so it's actually nothing, there's nothing wrong as such. It's just old anger, old energy that's being burnt up. We've got the Ten of Wands. There's something old. This is the end of a cycle. And it's burning off and you're being renewed. So your flame is, is growing brighter and stronger. Okay, so allow it to just run off. Another thing I learned about anger as well is that if you stay in the now, and if you meditate, if you, if while it's on you, just meditate. And I, I did that earlier, I think it was last week, it's funny all this is coming up, because I don't, I don't read cards for myself anymore, I used to, but um, I feel like I might be in this group. The thing is, one thing I discovered is I meditated for like 40 minutes straight. I did one 20 minute session and then I hit the timer and I did it again because I was enjoying it so much. Sometimes in a 20 minute session I get restless and I want to get out and I'll open my eyes and it's 18 minutes or something, right? So that happens a lot. And that means my body doesn't need the meditation. This time I needed two bouts of 20 minutes and I loved it. And one of the other things I discovered is that with, let's say, a bout of anger or something like that, if you stay in the now, if you stay in the present moment, you watch everything dissolve and run off. And the other thing that you'll catch is a healing. This is why it's so important to remain in the now. Every dark situation, every bad situation has a healing that comes afterwards. And you don't want to miss that. So this is why it's really, really important training as part of the spiritual path. You've got to stay in the now. Stay in the now and you'll experience the healing. Don't go back to the old thoughts, don't live in the past, don't dwell, don't go there, stay in the now. Stay with the emotion, let it pass, it will flow, it will flow just out. It'll be, ah, oh, yeah, so good. My gosh, we haven't got any quotes. We're gonna do two quotes today and I'm gonna do the leftovers, put them on Instagram. And the time is about to run out, but that's okay, I'll just start another, another card. Aha, every form of addiction, yeah, is bad, no matter whether the narcotic be alcohol, morphine, or idealism. Carl Jung, this is so true. It's, it's really interesting, just as I started reading this one. The power tools have died down, but I don't know if you can hear the fridge noise. The fridge noise is cranked up. This is amazing. This is perfect. Because addiction, you know, sometimes, like, we resolve our negative feelings with food or you know we stuff ourselves with cake or whatever and yeah i know i know all this definitely so here it's saying yeah every form of addiction is bad no matter i mean amazing that this comes up because we've got the devil here and the other thing is or idealism and i love this quote because that is so true and i've been looking at where is the fantasy thinking within me and I've been very disciplined about getting off the fantasies because, and you know, pick a card is a realm of study or life or work that actually can perpetuate a fan fantasy thinking lifestyle, I know. So I'm very cautious and understanding of this. So I don't, obviously don't want to 
you know. But that's why the focus of my readings, I tend not to go into love or twin flame or soulmates or that I don't do that. We'll talk about that. I'm going to focus one of these readings specifically on this thing called limerence. We're going to do that in the upcoming weeks. But um, idealism, yeah, I am looking at myself for where is the fantasy thinking. Say, for example, you've got this situation where you're angry with someone. It can be a real fantasy to expect them to change, you know. <laughs> Uh, so sometimes we've got to get real and we've got to realize and that's what the spiritual path is about getting real and saying look they're not going to change I have to change you know and that's that's why I love this path because it's real and it brings real results our way all right let's take a look what's in here yes exactly perfect quote there is only one corner of the universe you can be certain of improving and that is your own self exactly this is the spiritual path right here. So interesting that we've got both of these quotes uh, coming up for this reading. Just amazing, guys. So yeah, stick to your corner of the universe and improve that because I'm telling you now, there's so much abundance and a lot of good that wants to come, come in. So take care, everyone. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. I love reading your comments and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number two. If you chose group number two or the onion, the, what is it, a cocktail onion, then you're in the right place. So I think I know what we're doing now because we're going to take two of these and we're going to take two quotes. So this is, we've got a lot of number twos here and you guys are number two as well. Group number two. This is always a really steady, stable group I find. I think recently people have switched from three to one and one to three. There has been some movement which is pretty cool and that's I think in line with the solar eclipse, right? Okay, we'll take one from my Saturn deck. Oh, nothing obvious. Come on, make it obvious. <laughs> that one and what else are we gonna have what was next I think from here Vedic Astrology deck okay I'm gonna take two of these let's look at that it's a two 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 kind of a reading and hopefully we've got two quotes left over for Instagram because I've hardly put anything on Instagram lately Okay, one from here. Oh, that one's sticking out. Good. Mm. Oh, we'll take it. We'll take miracles as well. Go on. We can't leave miracles behind. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. That happened for a reason. Doesn't often happen. So that really wants to be here for you. Uh, we're gonna take one of these. And yeah, I don't know if you can hear, but there are a lot of Sort of construction, power tools, all that kind of thing. It's because we've got sun today. We haven't had sun for a really long time. It's been so rainy here in Sydney. And when now, when we get a day of sun, it's like everyone's out in the out in the garden doing the work because all the grass is just oh, you should see. It's amazing. All right, let's start here. All right, Mercury in the eighth house. Aha. Uh -huh. Inherits and earns a lot, very intelligent, lives long, gets sudden gains, can dig deep for intellectual knowledge and secrets, courtly manners. Ooh, that sounds good. Yes, absolutely. It's a good placement. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm trying to think, does Julian Assange have that? I know he's got, is it Sun Venus maybe? In Mer, in, yes, in Gemini, something like that he's got in the eighth. Oh, right, what a Jupiter. So Jupiter in the 10th house, so excels in academia, in leading others, doesn't work well under a boss. Yeah, that's so true. Brilliant public speaker, loves both mother and father and their family values. Yeah, for sure. This is very respectful of parents. Okay, interesting. Well, we've got miracles here, so we're going to see what else we've got. Oh, blessings, beautiful. We've had this card on the channel before. I love it. Wow, miracles and blessings. Gosh, that's 
great energy right there. So if your world is challenging at the moment, do know that you know there is there is good on the horizon and we've just got to hang in there sometimes. I know things are tough out there right now for a lot of people. Okay, the two of clubs, which is the two of wands, which is very much about strategizing it's about looking ahead it's about planning we've got this beautiful museum portugal the year is 2010 i don't know if that's significant for anyone okay let's take a look here signs right when this card comes up it's typically a thing that you're guides or angels they're asking you to look out for signs they're asking you to really pay attention at the moment so there is perhaps something let's have a look let's keep going oh the ace of swords okay i'm gonna have a look at all of these in one go because this is some kind of signal here judgment Again, another card that doesn't want to be seen. I think it's me. <laughs> okay, Nine of Swords. Yeah, I could imagine this doesn't want to be seen. Uh, Nine of Swords is a, a difficult card. I will say that. So I think there is something happening in your world at the moment. And this could be to do with other people. This could be to do with partner or family or parents as well and you're being asked to pay really close attention to signs and there's some reason for this I think because your team your angelic team they have been trying to uh, do you know I think they've just I, I think they've been trying to let you know that everything's going to be more than okay even if you can't see a way, and I'm getting the word way out, so I'll go with it. Even though you can't see a way out now. So uh, uh, there's a strong, strong message. And it's always like this because, you know, on, on their side, where they are, they can see a little bit more ahead down the road and they can see just how fine you're going to be. And that's why they're, they're wanting you to hang in there. And I know this from personal experience. I know when I've gone through the absolute worst stuff, I've had really strong, this kind of strong energy come through from my guides and angels. And they, they have been amazing over the years. I remember in London one time, this is in my town, which is basically, when you go into the city part of it, there are no trees. And in front of the cafe that I always go to, there was this really big, beautiful feather. It was a wood woodpecker feather in front. And it was right like it, these feathers always turn up like in one of my strides. Like, and I look down at the right moment and I see it. It was the most stunning feather I'd ever seen. And my guides were very much telling me, um, you know, don't you worry. Everything's going to be more than amazing. And like, it, and I'm talking really bad times in my life. There's another time I went through this horrible thing again in London. It, you know, it, it, I won't go into it because it's awful. But the, the angels and guides gave me a song the next day. They told me "Golden Years," David Bowie, and I didn't even know what that song was. But I just heard "Golden Years," David Bowie, while I was in the shower. I went and checked it out, and one of the lines in there was saying "Angel." nothing's going to touch you in these golden years and i knew that the guides and angels were trying to say and a big thing they were saying was it's not your fault and i feel i'm feeling this exact same energy i'm feeling the golden years and that woodpecker feather i got and i feel like you're going something through something really tough right now and i think it is family related or it's to do with partner or in-laws or something like this and there is something about way out or challenge or difficulty I think and to me I kind of think that this row is your row of blessings where the angels are saying pay attention to the signs we're with you 
hang in there this is all going to transform this is all going to come good and keep your eye on on like a bit further down the road um the future that's kind of where they that's what i'm yeah i'm getting the words okay like you're going to be safe contemplating the future for now kind of thing so like like some years away or something like that like don't be too much mm, and don't use that too much as an escape either <laughs> like it's a balancing act isn't it judgment because judgment i'm pretty sure connects in with libra seventh house balance right so yeah yeah that that energy has just come through quite strongly all of this is going to make you incredibly now here it's not a strength thing it's interesting in the group one that was all about physical power and strength and all that kind of thing the power tools were cranking up and my focus was going there here it's all of this is designed to make you incredibly sharp and defined okay so you through this experience you're going to become a very defined individual where your boundaries are going to be quite incredible and you're going to be enormously sharp and defined and i was listening to a coach talk about this recently where he said that the people that he really enjoys being with now are the ones who are very well defined they know their strengths they know their weaknesses so in that way they're just moving through life automatically attracting the right people because their boundaries are so strong and obvious and he said that he really likes people who are well defined and and i thought about this and i thought yeah i i'm enjoying that too i'm really enjoying saturnian type energies yeah boundaries you're this or you're that you know and i'm enjoying defining that because i'm in my saturn mahadasha so i'm recognizing that a lot and i'm seeing the benefits of having good strong saturn having good strong boundaries limits knowing your limits knowing your weaknesses knowing how far you can go and being true to that it's such a good thing the more defined you become that well yes i can do this but no i can't do all those things right so like knowing the no is really good because then you're just going to attract the right people and the right things and you're not going to become overworked overburdened burnt out you know it's because that's that's what's happening here i think and um but you this is going to going to clear out uh this is not a long term thing at all because you've got a great angelic team with you and they're really looking out for you and I, it's amazing that I and mean, thank you for <laughs> you know bringing these memories back into my life because yeah those two times when i got that woodpecker feather and when i got that song golden years that helped me so much and i'm feeling that kind of message come for you that the your team are really looking out for you but you're going to become so defined as an individual and it's going to make you so strong so sharp so intelligent you're just going to be able to see stuff coming and deal with it immediately you know uh you you're going to become incredibly wise look at that ace of swords judgment jupiter in the 10th that's wisdom and look at that you can see them coming <laughs> like you can see in the subconscious in the hidden place you will will see that that dynamic coming again and you'll very quickly nip things in the bud ace of swords you'll sort out things you'll be very sharp amazing amazing energy and amazing growth that's coming your way if you work with this situation right uh let's take a look and see what is going on in here we're going to take two let's see if we can be disciplined and just do two because <laughs> i want to leave some of these for instagram this time i haven't been posting on instagram very much it's been um yeah this is i like this quote why is this one come here interesting it says to the man who only has a hammer everything he encounters begins to look like a nail yes that's kind of interesting i i always think of this in relation to astrology actually because astrology is the tool that is my hammer and i look at everything astrologically these days but this could be an interesting quote in that it's asking you well in the context of this reading possibly to to 
get out of uh, this place and to see things from the perspective of the angels. So pretend that you are with the angels and get a feel for and see what kind of view they have because from their point of view, when they look at us, they're kind of like, what is, what is there to be worried about? You, you've got so much good coming. But I know, you see, it's difficult. I'm, I'm an earth being too. I, I don't know. What, I, I can't pretend to be an angel. I have no idea what that's like. Let's see what the next quote is. We might even go for a third quote if we need one. Oh, wow, I love this quote too. Gosh, but how does it apply here? Let's think. Desires make slaves out of kings and patience makes kings out of slaves. Do you know, this really does relate it really does, because that's what's being asked for here. Swords, this is air, this is, and look at the color, the dark blue. This is, you're being asked to be patient. Yeah, patience, boundaries, definition, being really clear, being, you know, yes, I can do this, but do not know, I can't do, you know, the thing that's, that's, that's putting you here. Um, it's, there's something about you needing to be really clear with boundaries and patient. You've got to be patient. And that's why, ah, that's why the angels are kind of saying, look some years ahead. And it is that thing of, if you look five years into the future, is this situation now even going to be relevant? Maybe not. It's this thing about broadening perspective, you know, and when you look at Saturn's journey, it's a big, long arc. It's really big, whereas a mercurial journey is a tiny little circle, right? But you're asking, they're asking you to go wide, go big. Look at that Jupiter in um, 10th house there. You're on a bigger arc and okay, it might feel slow, like you're not making progress, but keep going on that big arc and you'll be miles ahead of other people kind of thing because you're taking a wider arc. So yeah, it's, it's quite a couple of important messages here. I think we're good, group number two. Let me know how you get on with this reading uh, in the comments below. I absolutely love reading your comments and I look forward to seeing you next time. Hi there, group number three. If you chose group number three or this like by the card deck or by this cute little pickled gherkin thing, <laughs> Cornishon, I think that's what it's called on the jar. I don't use that term. I call that a gherkin. I, I don't know. If you chose that, then you're in the right place. So we are going to just make sure these are upright. Yes, they are. I'm going to take two of these and okay, we'll take the Ace of Pentacles. Yes, we love the Ace of Pentacles. <laughs> it's an excellent card. And that one. All right, there we go been decided so you're off to a winning start straight away I love it I love the ace of pentacles now what else we're gonna have one from Saturn Let's see what we get that one and we're gonna have a couple from the Vedic astrology deck I am working, well, in my mind I am working on a couple of new decks. Still haven't had the time to sit down at my desk you know, and do any kind of work work. Like I've been working at my desk all week, doing lots of things, doing lots of readings, lots of work, but yeah, haven't been able to do any other stuff, other projects. I also want to make tutorials and so many things I want to make. I just haven't had any time. Ooh. Wow, I'm being so clumsy with these giant cards. What is going on? Do you know, my hands are a little bit dry and sore today because I had so much cleaning to do yesterday as well. <laughs> anyway, because <laughs> we had a, a day of sun, so I was like, oh, there's all these things I can hand wash. Um, right. So yeah, boring things like, you know, laundry have to be done too. 
Oh, that one's there, isn't it? And then we're going to have one from here, the architecture deck, which I really love. Okay. Mm, no, I'm putting it back because there were two there. Okay, that one. Good. Very obvious. All right, let's see what's going on. So we're going to start here. Jupiter in the second house. Jupiter loves being here today. All right. Oh, this is a wonderful star. I love this. Yeah, speaks with authority and wisdom. Exudes optimism. Teaching comes naturally. Takes on family business. Yeah, or runs own business. Very knowledgeable. Very true. Yes. And also, there's something healing. I don't know. There's something healing about Jupiter. Jupiter or, yeah, second lord in the seventh is healing, isn't it? Anyway, we'll, we'll come to that. Let's see. The word healing did come up just now, even if it was an error. So let's uh, keep going. Ketu in the third. Yeah, this is a really strong. Yeah, this is a good placement. Strong and adventurous. Loves music and dancing. Might be psychic. Strong mind. Great money manager. Sociable. Helps family and friends. Yeah, I do love um, Ketu in the third. I think it's fantastic. Okay, so nice. Good, good energies here. Let's see what we've got down here. We've got the Ace of Pentacles there which is interesting jupiter in the second right some wealth expansion good we like that oh enlightenment this is such a pretty card i love it it's got that kind of journey sort of feel to it as well doesn't it wow okay let's see what we've got in here now the seven of that's not a club that is a spade and I want to say swords. It says Norwegian wild reindeer pavilion. How beautiful. Norway 2011. Lovely. Seven of swords. Mm. That is deceit, isn't it? It's deception. It's one of the ways of reading the seven of swords. Hmm, okay. Let's keep going. Retreat. Right, interesting. Yes, because this location does seem like some kind of a retreat space, actually. And it's funny because it reminds me of a time when I went to a Japanese spa in, I think it was like an hour out of Stockholm. Yeah. And I had a little retreat there. Seven of Swords, though. Hmm, retreat. It's like there's something you need to get away from. Because there's this enlightenment, there's this and okay, well let's let's keep going here. <laughs> wow, the ace of cups. Gosh, two aces. Stunning. That is wow. Well that's impressive. Two ace cards in one reading. And they're the best ones. Love and money. <laughs> What more could you want? Wow, okay, good. Right, let's see what we've got in here. All right, Queen of Swords in reverse. Nice. I'm getting it straight away. I just got the sense that like you can you can afford to relax a little bit, actually. Uh, you can really afford to not have your foot on the accelerator of life so much yeah look at that that matches this exactly this is so perfect wow oh well i'm blown away by this this is great energy you, yeah you're being asked to to really relax to enjoy life a little bit you know uh and and things aren't as they seem that's how i'm going to read this it's not deceit as such Maybe you've been pushing quite hard. Maybe you've been a little bit in Queen of Swords mode where you're like, I've got to earn the money. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I've got to you know, take care of the clients. I'm busy, busy, busy. I'm making the money. I want to meet the love of my life. Whatever, right? There's, I don't know. Maybe there's been quite a lot of busy energy. Everything's asking you just to calm it all down. <laughs> and, you know, and, and yeah, just go with... Go with a slightly different pace of life for a while, for a time. You'll be guided as to when you need to crank up again. 
that'll be made very obvious to you so don't worry about that don't and don't feel like you're slacking don't feel guilty we all do that don't we i do that i know because you think oh am i wasting my life <laughs> no you're not wasting your life one thing I've learned actually is about rest. I've learned that recently because my wrist was really, I had so much pain in this wrist of mine. And one of the things I discovered, and because I was doing a lot of kind of hands on work, and yeah, like as I was saying, I did all that hand washing and various things that have kind of, you know, been problematic for my hand. And this wrist was hurting. One of the things I learned is the importance of rest. I have to rest this. Otherwise, I will injure the wound that's already there. If I keep going, I will injure myself. And that's the same physically, it's the same emotionally, it's the same spiritually, it's the same, like whatever your goal is, whatever you've been working hard towards, or, you know, this is this very much a whole reading of please don't overwork. And <clears throat> If you're worried about abundance or any of that, I feel like there's no need to be because I just, yeah, I just had in my head what you, similar to group one, what you need, you have. It's all been supplied. So everything you actually need, you have. So I kind of feel like you don't have to worry about anything. The wealth side of things is being kind of taken care of. And there's no need to worry about the how or the when. These are just lovely energies. I'm not getting any sense of uh, any anything that's not going right. I am being drawn here and I am just going to let's draw another card. Let's just see what's in this, if there's anything. Because that's really, for me, this is the only thing that I could be overlooking here. Is this, so what I want to ask is, is this, um, is this that things are not what they seem? Is there something around that concept? Things are not what they seem. And I think that means, what do I think that means? I think it means like you might be thinking, oh, I have to do this, this, and this, and this in order to be successful. But like, I, I kind of get the sense that the energy is saying, no, you don't have, it doesn't have to be done like that. All right, let's, what's this? Yeah, let's keep the question really general. What's this? <laughs> let's shuffle a bit more. See what comes. Five of Cups. All right, yeah, I, I think this could be some of a heartbreak. Uh, this old energy. And I feel like you don't have to worry about it. Is what I think. I think you don't need to worry. You've got the Ace of Cups here. You are love. That's a really strong message. That's important to know. And this, sometimes when we go through heartbreak or the past or the thing that's not working, that that is illusion. Uh, you know, that's one of the ways that I'm working with shadow to see it for what it is and, and the past, that it's all illusion it's all illusion should we take these let's take them let's take two get a bit more information I'm being greedy all right let's see the eight of pentacles interesting depiction though because it is a couple and this is all about work okay king of swords mm. I think there could be some, if this is some relationship thing, it could be that there's some boundary that someone has set with you. 
perhaps maybe there is some heartbreak energy here but I'm seeing these two working happily together and I do think this exact thing is in your future but it will be in your future if you look after yourself okay and come back to the self and enjoy life have fun you're meant to enjoy you know um, you're meant to relax and enjoy that's so important and this is this is fun Th this is good energy here Ketu in the third house this is really asking you to, to step into the comfort zone of of fun of nice things of play of enjoying life of enjoying the abundance around you take your foot off the accelerator this situation if there's any heartbreak or negative energy or any of that recognize it for what it is it's it's illusion only love is real right only love is real and what's meant for you will come to you and that happened at the very beginning of the reading this popped out I, I didn't it, it was unintentional wasn't it this just came this was just like I, I was barely even shuffling and a card came out and this came as well these are coming in for you right They're like that's what this is money and love the, the the dream life that you want it exists in the future you are moving towards it but you can't and it, yeah it is that thing of my wrist with the I don't want to overwork it because it's a bit wounded look at that you've got the five of cups there yeah there's something that you need to and it could be emotional you need to rest you need to kind of put down your emotions you need to you know if you've been like doing too much hand washing or something you need to stop that <laughs> for like a day or two or you know it doesn't matter how much sunshine is out there whatever you but you have to rest there's some rest message and I think it could be emotional it's just like rest the emotions do something completely different distract yourself and this is great great you know bit of guidance distract yourself you're actually kind of being asked to you know have fun uh, do something different really I think it's it's that do something different yeah it's nice and that's for a time and then you're going to be guided you know the next time what what thing uh, to do ah yes nobody tells you why discipline is so important Discipline is the strongest form of self-love. It is ignoring current pleasures for bigger rewards. It's loving yourself enough to give yourself everything you've ever wanted. And this quote came from Instagram at House of Enlightenment. Yeah, absolutely. Discipline is really important. And sometimes, isn't this incredible? We need to be disciplined to rest, to tell ourselves it's all going to come in good time, you know and I know this really well I know the excitement of having 10 projects that you really really want to do but you can't overwork yourself either you know and you don't want to burn out you don't want to injure what's already a bit run down okay you want to recover there has to be sometimes a discipline to build rest into your life in such a way that you're then even more productive so that your two hours equals five hours of work you know your one hour could yeah could equal five hours of work like when your one hour when you're healthy and fresh could be the equivalent of five hours of work when you're a bit run down so you've got to think about all these things all right let's try and do this before the camera cuts out you can see it wants to cut out my throat chakra has been amazing today by the way guys i think one of you did say that you're going to work on my throat chakra it, it worked so thank you if somebody did that <laughs> uh, let's see here so we've got I used to think I was introverted okay so it says I used to think I was introverted because I really liked being alone but it turns out that I just like being at peace and I'm very extroverted around people that bring me peace Mariah Moon yes and I'd say this does apply to this five of cups situation here any heartbreak energy anything that you've been going through that's been a bit like this do look at that person critically as well do see that were they bringing me peace you know or were they just bringing me fantasy you know it's very important to how, how does my body feel when I'm around that person 
Um, do I feel well? Do I feel peaceful? Do I feel like I can be my full self? You know, do I feel like I can be extroverted and wacky and crazy and fun? And, you know, yeah, you want that, right? You want to be with people where you feel safe and you can be your full, complete self. So that is really important. And where there should be, it should be a feeling of friendship. So yes, you want the partner where it feels like family. Sure, we all want that, you know, and we all do look for partners and people who are like our, you know, mother or father or whatever. So yeah, we want to create that. We want to create family. But equally, we want, we want friendship in there as well, right? So we've got the second house here, we've got the third house here. Yeah. And you'll be your full self around the right people. Uh, group number three but for now keep heading towards enlightenment keep doing all the spiritual stuff that you do and enjoy your time enjoy some retreat time throw a pickle party <laughs> i should do cupcakes one day we have mini cupcakes here as well <clears throat> all right well thank you so much group number three for tuning in let me know how you get on in the comments below i absolutely love reading your comments and I look forward to seeing you next time.